righty, folks, let's buckle up and dive into the moody world of Ernest Hemingway's The Killers. It's like a noir film, but in book form and with less dramatic lighting. This tale serves us a platter of existential dread with a side of dry wit. So let's break it down and sprinkle it with a little humor because, let's face it, we could all use a laugh when navigating Hemingway's bleak landscape. Our story kicks off on one unsuspecting winter evening in Summit, Illinois, a place that sounds like it should be at the top of something, but is actually just south of Chicago. Nick Adams, our protagonist and eternal wanderer in Hemingway's world, is hanging out at a diner, waxing philosophical with George, the manager. They're minding their own business when in walk Al and Max, the fashion disasters of the criminal underworld. Dress it in black from head to toe like they are auditioning for a budget remake of Men in Black, Al and Max quickly establish themselves as the kind of guests you'd never want to review your dinner on Yelp. After throwing shade at the diner's menu and calling Nick and George dumb country boys, our less than dynamic duo decides to spice up the evening by taking hostages. Because obviously, what else do you do when the menu doesn't meet your standards? They tie up Nick and Sam, the cook, who probably regrets not calling in sick, in the kitchen. Through some top-quality villain monologuing, we learn they're here to whack Ole Anderson, an aging boxer with a side gig and disappointing hired killers by not showing up for his scheduled assassination. Once it's clear Ole is standing them up, Al and Max exit stage left, their killer careers facing a serious setback. George, embracing his inner escape artist, frees Nick and Sam, and they all partake in the most awkward, what do we do now, conversation in literature. George nudges Nick to go warn Ole, because if there's one thing you do in a small town, it's stick your nose where it generally doesn't belong. Nick finds Ola, who's essentially given up on life and is ready to embrace his fate with the enthusiasm of someone watching paint dry. Ola's reaction to his impending doom is so passive, you start wondering if he's just really into minimalism, including in his survival instincts. Nick, having none of this, decides Summit's too wild for him and plans to hit the road. It's like Nick suddenly remembers he has other places to be that don't involve existential crises and murder plans. Now, Hemingway's not just giving us a thriller. He's pushing us into the deep end of moral and existential quandaries. The Killers mirrors the bleakness of a winter in Illinois with the grim acceptance of one's fate by Ole and the crisis of conscience facing Nick. Al and Max are less characters than they are moving metaphors for the relentless, impersonal nature of evil they're like a bad Yelp review that tries to kill you. The real gut punch of the story isn't the planned murder. It's Nick's realization that the world is filled with darkness that can't always be fought head on. Some battles, as he sees through Ole's resigned eyes, are internal, fought on the bleak battlegrounds of the soul. Hemingway's dining establishment becomes a, if this content was helpful, please reward me with a like and a subscribe, and tell me what you thought about this video down in the comments. Thank you for watching this Bookly Crash Course video.